Metal Gear Survive has been mired in controversy ever since it was publicly unveiled. The game's announcement came off the heels of a nasty breakup between series creator Hideo Kojima and Konami, and on top of being plagued with microtransactions, reviewers were quick to pan it. But here's really why the game failed. Konami put out a Metal Gear game where you're just trying to poke at zombies from behind a fence. What were they thinking? The entire game is clearly a quick cash grab by trying to shoehorn in a worn out genre and... Uh... Wait, is this the same here? This is Metal Gear Survive as I know it. I won't deny that it's very flawed, but I think the game has more to offer than many give it credit for. In Survive, you'll find yourself stranded in another world named Dite. Much of its atmosphere is unbreathable, and it's inhabited by crystallized zombies, which the game calls Wanderers. Luckily, Dite is rich with energy that can be used to improve your character and equipment. Most of this energy is gathered from a digger device, which you'll need to defend as hordes of wanderers come to attack it. But, before I get ahead of myself, I want to mention that Metal Gear Survive is an always online, live service game. If you lose connection to the server, you'll be booted out even if you're playing the single player mode. And it's practically guaranteed that the game will be unplayable when Konami inevitably shuts down the server. Another side effect of the online model is you cannot replay the game on a new save file. No matter if you delete your character or buy an additional one, resources and crafting recipes are shared among them. This neuters the game's challenge when replaying missions. To actually replay Survive, I had to log into a secondary Steam account and utilize the family sharing feature to launch the game from there. Anyway, Survive features a full campaign mode to play through. Over the 20 hour campaign, you're tasked with exploring Dite and gathering enough energy to make a wormhole back home. You'll also encounter other stranded survivors and recruit them along the way. These survivors stay at base camp and help by procuring supplies, improving your crafting abilities, and managing agriculture so you have access to food and water. Sustenance is a very pressing concern early on. With how quickly your hunger and thirst meters dwindle, you need to balance completing missions with gathering resources. Down the road, you'll get access to farms and rainwater tanks, which greatly alleviate the need to scavenge for food. Most of the game's map is covered in dust, which forces your character to use a limited oxygen supply and limits your view. Even your location on the map won't be shown while you're in it unless you're on a road. While many modern games give you a waypoint telling you where exactly to go, Survive kicks that crutch out from under you. And since your oxygen runs out quickly, getting lost in the dust can provide genuine panic moments. Unfortunately, the story isn't as captivating. There's a fair bit of dialogue, but both the plot and the characters are pretty forgettable. There are some cool cinematics early on, but the game's low budget soon becomes apparent as cutscenes give way to unanimated conversation screens. Speaking of budget, if you played Metal Gear Solid 5, a lot of this game's assets will seem familiar, although it's not something that bothered me much. Playing through the campaign, it definitely has its moments, Whatever it is, engaging it with your current armament would be extremely dangerous. We recommend you avoid contact with it and return to base camp. But it's a bit too rough around the edges to call it great. When you complete the main story, you're able to continue improving your crew and base in the post-game. You'll also have four character specializations unlocked, which help define your playstyle. My character is a medic, I tend to stick back and take out wanderers with a bow, but I'm resilient enough to go in with a machete. To further progress in the post-game, you'll need to do salvage missions, which are wave defense challenges. The first option is a solo mode which uses your own base camp as a defense site. While you have as much prep time as you want, it's very possible for everything in your base, including those rare animals that you collected, to be destroyed. On top of that, the time between waves is 22 real life hours, 
So unless you spend premium currency. There's only so much of that you can do in a sitting. Thankfully, there's no such limit in the co-op salvage missions. While the co-op isn't played in the same world instance as a single player, your character and items still transfer over. There's one little problem though. The game wasn't exactly a top seller on Steam, and using the matchmaking doesn't get us anywhere. However, after being pointed in the right direction by the nice people of Survive subreddit, I found that the game's Steam group chat is fairly active. From there, you can ask around and find a group to play in. And it's worth the hassle too, because the co-op is a highlight of the game. The mission serves as an open-ended problem, and everyone has their own role to fill. For combat, you can stay back and take out wanderers with a bow, or charging with a melee weapon. And the reason I stick with the bow as a medic is that I can share my health with my teammates. For the intermissions, you can spend the free time laying down defenses, or you can go off and complete side quests. When you put down defensive units, you can choose from fences, traps, barricades, or turrets. Though you have to collect the supplies beforehand, a little careful placement can practically automate your defenses. A simple example is placing a turret behind a fence. The fence holds off the zombies while the turret kills them. And there's more elaborate tactics, but nothing's foolproof. They always wear down, and if you don't account for the special wanderers, they can get destroyed in a second. Even outside of the co-op, you'll be burning through your crafting materials. Although completing missions does net your resources, it's easy to be running a deficit of a particular type if you don't pay attention. To remedy this, you're encouraged to mix up your loadout especially since missions can have special conditions, and different maps favor certain strategies. There's another layer of strategy with how you utilize Kuban energy. Killing Wanderers grants your team Kuban, which you can spend on speeding up the digger, putting down defensive traps, or calling in heavy ordnance. Getting an S rank, which rewards you better items, often requires you to keep the digger sped up. On harder difficulties, even that's not enough, you'll also have to fight bosses or set up support diggers. In spite of everything I've said and shown, even the co-op for Metal Gear Survive has a massive flaw. It's very grindy, which isn't helped by the fact that there are only five multiplayer maps. You can play a match on every map and be done in under two hours. And even though that's a really big problem, what saves the experience is just how engaging the gameplay is. Thanks in no small part to the Fox engine, combat is simply fun. The melee weapons are clunky, but satisfying, and the gunplay, which is unchanged from Metal Gear Solid 5, is very refined. There's even a bit of stealth carried over, just to give you more options. Wrap up the satisfying action with a unique strategic defense layer, and you've got one really tasty burrito that I'll eat any day of the week. Middle Gear Survive is a game that really won me over, if you haven't been able to tell. While I'd like others to give it a shot, I would also provide many caveats with any recommendation. The single player isn't amazing, and ends up being a barrier of entry for the co-op. Past that, you also have to be willing to go out and find other players for yourself. Finally, there's a good chance that Konami will pull the plug for this game in a couple of years, making it entirely unplayable. Unfortunately, that's also a reason to play Survive while you still can.